Anthony Hayes makes the buzzer beater three to put Brock over Western on Wednesday night. Maybe the play of the year in the OUA so far. There were only 0.5 seconds left in the game when the inbounds was made, but that did not phase Hayes. Welcome to the OUA Basketball Show, everyone. My name is Griffin Porter. Before we get started here, a big thank you to BioSteel for being such a great partner of the OUA. BioSteel is redefining sports hydration and as the official hydration partner of the OUA, they are supporting the next generation of Canadian athletes. Their zero sugar, high quality products help athletes perform at their absolute best. Be sure to check out biosteel.ca slash OUA for more info. Just me coming at you this week, folks. We weren't able to get on the guests that we were quite hoping for. Some people are not checking their Instagram DMs as often as they should be, I guess. I, uh, I'm i not going to name any names, but hey, if you're an OUA athlete out there, and especially if you had a great weekend, keep an eye on your DMs. I might be reaching out. You never know. Um, but let's talk about Anthony Hayes instead. That just gives us more time to take some deep dives on some of the games from last weekend. Anthony Hayes, the hero of Wednesday night, the St. Catharines native in his second year. He's made a la- massive leap. And this was just the capper on a career night for him. Scored a career-high 21 points off of seven made threes. If you can do math as well as I can, you know that three times seven is 21. Every single point that he scored coming off a made three, that's the kind of stat line that you just love to see. That just tickles my fancy. Uh, But now that we've focused on that, we got a lot of other really interesting results to look at from the men's side last week. Someone finally beat the Lakehead Thunderwolves. And the team to end the undefeated season was the Queens Gales. Lakehead, of course, still a contender, uh, but they ran into a tough test in Kingston. And despite an amazing effort from Harold Santa Cruz, uh, the Thunderwolves just couldn't pull it out. They commit 23 turnovers in that game. Always tough to win a game when you commit 23 turnovers. Queens scores 19 points off those 23 turnovers. That's going to factor in pretty heavy in a five-point win, those 19 points. Uh, so that, that's a tough break for Lakehead, who I think are quickly becoming fan favorites in the OUA this season. I know I love to see them succeeding, uh, but you also love to see a tough Queens team uh, play a fantastic game against Lakehead. And despite losing some key, key players over the summer, uh, the Gales have now clearly proven that they're more than capable of defending last year's title. Cause, and they better be ready because there are a lot of people getting ready to try and take that trophy from them as we zero in on the winter break here. Uh, So with Lakehead going down, the Carlton Ravens are now our last remaining undefeated team. Hope everyone enjoyed that one year off last year where we saw some uh, weakness, maybe a a slight rebuild from Carlton because they are definitely back. Only the TMU Bold have allowed fewer points than Carlton this season. Uh, The Ravens get down and dirty and they drag opposing offenses down with them. Ravens Nest is back to being a very, very tough barn to go into. And speaking of the TMU defense, they held Waterloo to 31 points this weekend. That was a spectacular defensive effort for all 40 minutes. Meanwhile, Algoma came this close to picking up their first win of the season, but instead that honor went to the York Lions. They were just able to hang on at the end. Trayvon Hamilton made a clutch offensive rebound to seal it. He also had seven steals in that game which is a crazy number. Uh, And York gets their first win of the year against Algoma instead of the other way around. That was a tough one between two programs who really needed that big boost. Let's move over to the women's side where we had more exciting action. Dorcas Buisa earned her uh, OUA Athlete of the Week honors. She scored almost 70 points across Carleton's two games last weekend, which is just crazy. She scored 20 points in the fourth quarter alone against Guelph, and that was part of a 38-point night, which was good enough to set a modern Carleton record for points in a regular season game, which is just incredible when you sit back and think about all the quality that's come through that women's program. Uh, She then followed that 38-point night out with a 31-point and 10-rebound effort in the next night in a win over a tough McMaster team. So a truly incredible weekend from our old friend of the show, Dorcas. And she's also the second consecutive player on that Ravens team to win OUA Athlete of the Week after Jacqueline Urban won it last week. Uh, So lots of great stuff going there as Carlton continues to roll 
We all know they're the two-time defending national champions. And just like on the men's side, Carlton is the last undefeated team in the OUA. No doubt in my mind, some uh, internal competition over in Carlton just to see who's going to blink first. I, I don't think any of them are losing anytime soon. Uh, but speaking of teams that are looking strong, the Western Mustangs are picking up speed. They're getting up to a gallop, if you will. Maybe a trot. Eh, I'll say a full gallop because they've picked up some big wins and have now won six in a row after starting out one and four. Uh, everything really starting to click now over in London. New addition Jenna Button is really settling in nicely. She's second in the OUA in scoring. Uh, and the Western Mustangs looking really, really strong after that early stumble out of the gate. More horse metaphors for you. We got all the team mascot metaphors here on the OUA basketball show. Uh, meanwhile, the Windsor Lancers picked up a pair of wins over Nipissing and Laurentian. They move into t- first place in that tight OUA West. Shout out to Julia Sherratt for leading the team in scoring in both games from the bench. She's really improved her scoring and her shooting percentages so far this year. Her three-point percentage has gone up by 12 points uh, over last season. So that's definitely a player and a team to keep an eye on as the season moves forward. Always fun to see Windsor doing well. And speaking of going forward, why don't we now turn our eyes to the future just like we're all supposed to do, uh, just to keep an eye on the future. That's very important, folks. Don't don't look in the past. Um, believe it or not, and and hold on to your seats when I tell you this. There is more exciting OUA basketball to be played. I know I come on you get on here every week and tell you guys that there's exciting OUA basketball to be played. There's even more coming up this weekend. It's tough to believe, but that's just the quality of of content and co- competition that we are dealing with here in the OUA. Uh, Let's start on the women's side, where for Friday night's game to watch, I'll go with Queens traveling to Toronto to take on the York University Lions. York's look solid during their their, uh, three and five start to the season, and we all know that Kiara Leverage is completely capable of taking over any given game. Of course, it'll be a very, very tough test in the Queens Gale, so that should be a fun one. Then on Saturday, we'll look at down to downtown Toronto as TMU plays host to the Ottawa GGs, two Cretelli Cup contenders clashing for the first time this season. Uh, the Bold are calling this the their Pack the Mac game, um, and it's going to be a great vibe down there on College Street Saturday afternoon in Toronto. On the men's side, we'll look to two schools trying to fight to 500 for our Friday night game as the 4-5 and five Waterloo Warriors go up against the 4-5 and five Nipissing Lakers on Friday night. Never too early to think about those final playoff positions, and those are two teams that are going to be jockeying for them all season long. And for the Saturday games, I know what you're thinking, Griffin, how are you going to pick? Guess what? I don't have to pick. We get very lucky because Ottawa at TMU, the second half of that Pack the Mac game goes at 4 p.m. And then at our normal 8 p.m. tip, time uh we get carlton at lakehead that's going to be an amazing game we all know how phenomenal the lakehead thunderwolves have looked this year we all know a great carlton has looked this year i talk about it almost every week on this show uh so i don't have to choose because they start at different times and you can watch both games there's no excuse for you to watch both games and you can't get mad at me for choosing both games they are both our game to watch on saturday night too bad you can't stop me uh That's about it here for the OUA Basketball Show this week. Like we said, check your DMs if you think you're out there. Think you deserve to be interviewed. If you want to be interviewed, DM me. I'd love love to hear that. Let me know. Um, But if you're a fan and you just want to DM me as well, let me know how much you love the show. That would be great too. And if not, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again to BioSteel. And we will be back with you next week. Enjoy the games.